Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV, and today I will project. I'm going to install what's called a transfer switch into my electrical system of my RV. Now I'm not an electrician or anything, just a, a DIY end user. So take that with a grain of salt. You know, you should have an electrician do this if you don't know exactly what you're doing. There is risks involved. Just as a disclaimer up front. So why do I want a transfer switch? So I do a lot of off-grid camping, boondocking, and recently I've got a new Lion Energy power station. And that power station has a 2000 watt inverter. Um, so it's basically able to power a lot of things in the RV. So rather than have to plug things into that, I'm gonna wire a transfer switch in. So that I'll build a plug in my uh, power station and it'll go through this box and into all the plugs in my RV so you know the microwave will work, the toaster will work, all that kind of stuff without rewiring the whole RV. Um, you want a transfer switch because if you had the inverter plugged in and then say you plugged into shore power you could get a back feed and destroy your inverter so this thing sort of automatically switches between shore power and my inverter power um, it also can be used for a generator power or you can stack multiple ones together and use generator inverter and shore power and you could even have it set up that uh, it would it would uh, when it's on inverter mode it wouldn't power your converter um, my converter I have a switch already a, a breaker that I use so I won't wire it that way but it's good to know that that's the case because say you have an inverter that's being powered off your battery bank you don't want to actually be powering your charge converter which is charging your batteries you get kind of a a weird charging loop and it'll suck power and drain your batteries quicker anyway i'm going to do the most simple install and this thing also automatically some are, are switched you manually have to switch that this thing automatically senses so normally it's going to be powering my inverter and when i plug into shore this thing will automatically switch over to shore power um, there also is a time delay to it. That's the default um, condition, but there, are, there is a way to, to get rid of the time delay and have it instantaneously switch over. So the lid, it comes with a nice box like this um, with a lid and everything. So pop the lid off, give you a look at the guts here. This is the main switch right there. Just a giant relay. And then this one actually has everything wired to to really hook up quickly because it has the Wago wire nuts there. So all you have to do is strip the wires that you're going to be inputting in this and stick them in there and click. That's all there is to it. So that's pretty cool. And then you've got your, your grounds over here. So you've got your black hots and your white neutrals and then your ground wires get attached there. You can sort of see here there's a, a schematic there. They didn't really give me anything. I got this off of Amazon and it didn't come with really any instruction manual or anything. But I, online I can go to the, this is a GoPower, I can go to the GoPower site and find a manual for different hookups. So this end will hook into the inverter and this end will hook into the panel in the RV, the distribution panel. And then this middle one will hook into the incoming shore power. So normally the inverter and this one will be connected and then when you plug in the shore power the relay switches to shore power from inverter so that shore power and inverter can't be connected at the same time and they do that using a little board in here and here is a, is a thing to uh, run the wires through kind of convenient just like that and then down in here there is a board controller board right there it does the switching for you and you can see here I read that if you put a jumper across there it uh, takes it from bypass mode and from from dot time delay mode I mean into a, a non time delay mode so short h1 or h2 to bypass the time delay so that's right there First I'll do a quick test before I go all the way to installing it, make sure everything's working. So I just have some AC power coming over this box here into this end, pretending it's the inverter power. 
and out the panel ones I have 118.3 volts. So now I'm going to switch this over to the shore input and we'll see if the relay clicks. Okay, but here we go. Yeah, fair well, a 30 second time delay I guess, but you heard it click. Uh, I have 118 volts on the output. Just make sure there's no voltage on the inverter right now. Looks like we got 1.6 volts on the inverter input. Not sure why that's there. Maybe a bit of stray voltage or something to do with the control board, but definitely it doesn't have the 118 volts, so it must be good to go. I think we'll install it and see how it works. Show you where I'm going to install it. So here's my main power distribution in the RV. You can see there's some AC breakers there, my DC bus bar, and then underneath there is my charge converter. Now I've had this out before and I know behind there there's quite a bit of hollow space. And I think there's going to be enough space to, to put that in behind the power center. And that'll make it easy to hook up to the, the power coming in and the power going to the, the distribution panel. I'll just be able to uh, cut the, the power coming in, splice in where the hookups are there. And then as far as my inverter, I've run, it's actually in the basement storage, kind of behind that panel. Inside the basement storage is the line energy power center. So what I've done is I've run a very heavy duty cable here that will go in to the transfer switch. So I was able to uh, find an area to come through where there was a heating duct and previously I had drilled a hole through there for some, a buddy heater. So it winds through behind where the water heater is. It's going to go underneath in the furnace area. I'll probably run it along the roof line and I'll have to drill a hole between. There's a small thin wall that goes in between there. Then I'll be able to bring it in behind there. And then once I, I clean things up, I'll go through and put some grommets and stuff where I'm running the, the cabling through. This stuff is actually a really heavy duty outdoor extension cord. Um, so I think it should be able to handle the, the current no problem. Anyway, let's pull this out and we'll see actually how much space we have behind there. So I've totally shut off the, the AC power to the rig and uh, so I won't get shocked or anything like that. Lots of fun stuff back there. But basically this is your AC power, shore power stuff. This orange one is the main shore power coming in to the distribution and the breakers. And then on that side is all my DC power. You can see the black and white there. That's going and connecting to, to the, uh, the white's connecting to the frame, I believe as a ground return and the black goes all the way back to my battery comes out of the charger down there and through then all DC distribution is all those whites and that heads off into all the different uh, DC distribution circuits to run things like lights and stuff so it looks like a big mess but actually it's pretty easy to figure out but I do have room back here looks like I got room right down in there to to mount the box. I brought my inverter wire here so I'm just gonna have to cut into this orange wire a little bit back there so that I can uh, wire it in. There we go. Got her all hooked up and wrangled back in there. Managed to get a couple screws into the floor for the case so it doesn't move around. And I think I got enough room to get this power center back in just barely. So we'll put the lid on. Sew things up and give it a try. Kind of nice the lid just has quick snap latches on it. Okay, so here's where my power station is going to reside. And I've ran the cord over. Unfortunately, I made a dope and cut the wrong end of the cord. Of course, you got to make a mistake in every project. So anyway, I've just basically soldered that together for the time being. I'm going to have to get a new end for it. So we'll plug that in. And then we'll turn on the output for the inverter and we'll go in and see if she's working in there.
This have the converter breaker flipped off and also the water heater breaker. And our air conditioner is off, it's not going to come on. So I really only have the all the outlets in the rig and the microwave breaker. So let's give it a test, make sure everything's working. There's the TV plugged in and working. And we'll give a quick check to the microwave. There we go, microwave's working. And we'll see if Ann can blow dry her hair. Low. Looks good. So another reason I wanted to hook it up like this was to be able to run our fridge. So I can have the power station on in the basement storage and the power will go through all our plugs, but it'll also be able to run our fridge while we're towing. So I don't have to have any propane on or anything. I never really did. I always just turned it off and then we would just arrive and usually the food would be okay. But with this setup, I'm going to be able to leave the power box on powering our fridge the whole time that we're towing. So that's kind of cool. Now I'm going to go outside and plug the RV into shore power. And we should hear that relay click behind there and it should switch over to shore. Okay, that was my surge projector clicking on, making sure the power coming in was okay. Now we should hear a click within about 30 seconds, and we should switch over. There we go. Now we should be on shore power. I'm going to go turn the inverter off, and if we truly are on shore, shore power, this microwave should stay on. Yay, she works! Inverter's off. I'm sure this won't be the final version of my wiring. I just wanted to kind of get it going so I can test it. It's going to be going boondocking in the next few weeks. So kind of test it out, see how everything works. If everything works good. I think I'm going to put a box in here, like an AC outlet box right there, and run a proper AC uh, power cord through the underbelly of the RV and pop it up right beside through the flooring right beside where the transfer switch is. That way, if I have it there, I can just make a little jumper cable here so I can just plug it in, plug it in. Be kind of a, a skookum way to go, I think. So I picked up the TS30 transfer switch on Amazon.ca. It was 12337 Canadian dollars. I have seen it on the American site for 79.95 US, so it's even a better deal there. You can kind of see how there's a diagram there and how to hook it up, that sort of thing. But also, I'll leave a link to the GoPower page, and uh, they sort of have a, a, some product manuals down here, user manual, specs sheet, and it, it goes over and will show you, you know, a little more diagrams in depth on different ways you can hook it up. You can incorporate a generator into it or the converter charger, that sort of thing. Or even with two transfer switches, you can get you can get even more in depth. But uh, keep in mind, this is only a 30 amp transfer switch. Uh, it won't work in like a 50 amp rig. Anyway, till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, folks.